Hi, George here, and I'll be showing you how to make this circle portrait. And there are a few tricky things about this. Notice over here, we have a layer mask, which also has cut out for this circle shape. There's also a gradient in here, along with a standard layer mask for the girl's head. So several tricky things happening on this one, but it's all straightforward if you take it step by step. Let's start off by opening up the two original images. I had them up here in my recent edit file list. There's one right there. There's our background image. And here's the foreground image. We we'll use the picture in the background as our basic working image. And I'll just take the background here, just drag it over onto that picture and bring it over like that. Now, if you don't have floating windows working, that's just an easy way to do this kind of a project to combine your layers together. If you don't have that, go up here to the edit menu, come down to preferences right here and in general. And that's a checkbox right here, allow floating documents in advanced mode. That's that one. I also have zoom and scroll wheel checked as well. That's often useful. I'll put the link for these two pictures into the description. So you can go ahead and download there. If you want to get the whole working file over here when we're finished, this file right here, I'll put the link for that into my HDG Photo Coach program. So if you have that, you'll have that link available. And that's down in the projects section or down on the right-hand side menu. If you don't have that program, I'll put the link for that in the description. And the first thing I want to do here is just to make the basic layer mask. Let's just hide our background, get that out of our way. And I'll use the same technique here that I used in a recent Affinity Photo project. And that's starting off with the regular lasso tool. And I'll make a lasso right around the image in close, but not going over. So just kind of like this, just come around, around the bottom like that. And then up around this side, this is a real fast way to make a selection and then use that for a layer mask. And it frequently works out very well, depending upon your image. You need to have a good separation between your foreground and background. It's a little bit bad over here, right hand side on the hair. It's almost the same color as in here. It's a little bad up here. She's cut off at the top. So it needs a few things to make this work perfectly, but this will get us very close. Okay, come down, click on Refine Edge. And in here you can use a little bit of contrast. I wouldn't use too much on this, but a little might help. And then I'm using the standard brush size. There it is, you can see that. And I have this set in the overlay mode, which is what I normally use. That's that red coloration in there. It's just pretty easy to see the mask this way. And then come along and brush right along the edge of the hair. There we go, and just go clear around. And what this does is it tells Photoshop Elements that you want to have it do a better selection right along that area. And it goes in and finds the actual edge for you. So it makes it much easier for your making of that selection. Now I'll come across the bottom down here. And if you're out quite a ways like that, you can come in here and just brush in like this and try to get that brought in. That's not gonna get it all, but I'll show you how you can fix that. A little later on, we're actually gonna be cutting it off before we get down to that section. So it's not really going to matter for this particular image. And around the hair up here. Notice I'm doing it in just fairly short selections in here. And then letting elements go in, figure it out. And so you missed a spot here, I missed a spot there. I'll show you how to clean that up. I missed a spot up here. We'll clean that up as well. And then along in here. And then come back over and just come around the jacket again this works out well if you have good separation between your foreground and background if not then elements have a real hard time finding where that edge is and it won't give you a good job in this case it's a pretty good edge pretty easy to see now it's not perfect there are some problems in here her hair is too close to the top edge up there for instance but we'll get all that fixed now i want to output this to a new layer with a layer mask she's okay and that gives us a safety layer of her picture if we need that in the future just in case and here's our new layer with this layer mask. Let's now clean this up. If you click on the layer mask side, notice that light blue outline over there. It means that now the layer mask is selected we can work on the layer mask. Notice how it's showing in here is showing in white and what's missing is in black. So black hides and white shows. I want to hide some of this stuff in here. So I'll grab my paintbrush, make sure the black color is in the foreground. If you don't have black up here, just click on the little button right down here. This resets it to the defaults and hit that arrow and it puts black in the front. I have my brush here at 75 pixels. Any good size is all right. And it's a hard edge, but I could go a little softer on that if you want to. Maybe go to a soft edge and bring the size down maybe to about 45 here. There we go. The smaller the brush, the smaller the fade out on your soft edges. So you can get a pretty good edge with this size brush. Make sure that your opacity is at 
in across the top. I'm just going to carefully paint right in, just cutting just into that hard edge area. And go over this a few times just to make it hard enough. Now it's a little bit soft up there. We'll fix that again in just a minute. Let's check this side. It looks pretty good over here. Don't really see any problems. It's a little bit off right there and a little bit right over in here. And this gets rid of the worst of it. Doesn't fix everything though. It's still a little soft in some spots. Let's now change our brush over here to the burn tool. You probably will be seeing this icon up here and that's the dodge tool. So come down here, options, want the burn tool, you want it on a hard edge. Let's set this at mid-tones, exposure at 100 and maybe a little larger on that brush. That's pretty good. And wherever you see things being a little soft, just come in here and brush over that. What I'm doing is I'm making the layer mask more contrasty at that spot. So if your layer mask is getting a little thin and you're seeing some softness happen in there, you can use this to kind of firm up those edges, make the edges stronger by making them more contrasty. Let's kind of move along here. And that looks pretty good now. Maybe a little bit right over in here. It's a good way to clean up your edges on your layer masks. We may see some more things once we add the background in here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Okay. Let's now bring up our background. We'll show that. And that's looking pretty good. I don't really see any problems in there. Maybe a little bit right up in here. There we go. Okay, so we have a nice layer mask in here. Now, if it's too soft, like we have over here, you actually can sharpen that up if you want to. Over here, come down to the Sharpen tool. Let's make that size a bit bigger. And just do a few strokes right there just to kind of harden up those edges if they look too soft to your eye. It depends upon your initial picture. We had some softness in here, but I think a little bit harder is better. Okay, so far so good. We did some work there on that layer mask. Now I want to have her image fading out at the bottom. And that's something I would normally do with a layer mask, but we're already using the layer mask to cut her out of the background. So what we can do is edit the actual layer mask itself Hold the Alt key down, click on the layer mask, and this shows just the layer mask. Now, if we go over here to the gradient tool, come down here, set this at this gradient. That's the second one in from the left-hand side. That's your foreground color to a transparent. That's what I want. And come down just off of the bottom down here, hold the Shift key down, and then pull this up just a little ways. And we can do this a few times until we get a nice dark area there. There we go. So it's now going transparent right down here. I'll go a little bit larger so it's a bit of a softer transparency. So we've now added a transparency in here or a fade out. Now click on any other layer. We see now that her image is actually fading out. So we've edited the layer mask to give us that fade out effect right down here. Okay, now let's create a circle around her. And the circle will actually be on the background. We want to make a circle in here showing part of the background and leaving us no background in behind that. So for that, go over here to the background layer, right click where it says background, duplicate layer, choose OK, and hide that original. We can now do a transparency in here. You have to have a hidden layer below your layer that you want transparency on for this to work. That's why I did that. Of course, I tend to make the copy of the background layer anyway. In this case, we have another reason for making that copy. You'll see that in just a bit. Let's go over here, left hand side, and grab the shape tool. I have mine set here at the ellipse tool. Normally that's being shown as a square, but you want the ellipse. I have the drop down here set to circle. I have the setting here from center and come into the center of the picture, which is right around here someplace and pull a circle out in about like that. And I can go over here to the move tool and I can then move the circle around to us where I want that position. I want it oh, about like this, I think on our image. That looks pretty good. Now she's a bit high and so is the circle. So I'm going to grab her layer and down to the shape layer using the shift key. We'll pull both of those things down just a little bit. So the circle is kind of centered on the page and that looks pretty good right there. And now we're seeing another problem. Her shoulder is sticking outside of that circle. We don't want to have that. So I need to do some more work on her layer mask up here. So we're on the shape layer. Hold the control key down, click on the shape. That makes a selection out of that shape. Let's now invert that selection, go up to select, come down to inverse. So the outside is now selected. Let's now go up to the 
image up here, click on the layer mask. You're in the layer mask area. If it goes over here, just click on the layer mask. You want that light blue outline around your layer mask. So this is now selected. Hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask. So we're in the layer mask. You can see what you're doing here. You could do this without being in the layer mask. It would still work the same way. It's just easier to see it this way. Go over to the paintbrush. You want a hard edge brush. That's very important on this. Bring our sides up a little bit. Reason for the hard edge brush is if you use a soft edge brush, it may fade a little bit into the selection. And I don't want that. I mean, now if we paint black over here, notice how black is hiding anything on this side. And just come right down along that selection. And let's paint out everything that's spilling outside of that circle. So we're doing more editing in here on the layer mask. That looks good. Let's come back down to the shape layer. And there we go. And you can do Control D to deselect. So far, so good. Now I want to have the background picture inside of that shape. Come back here to the Move tool. Take your shape and pull it below the background copy. Like that. And then go up to Background Copy. Right-click on the name. And come down to Create Clipping Mask. And it puts that image inside of that shape. There we go. It's now inside the shape. Okay, now... I want a new background for this. And for that, we'll come over here to graphics. This is also why I made a copy of that background. Another reason for this. Come down to graphics. And I'm in the by type section right here and backgrounds right there. And we're pretty close to the top here. I'll just scroll down just a little ways. And right here is kind of a nice autumn looking background. Click on that. There's our autumn background. Now notice in here, we have a bit of a drop shadow right in here between the background and this pumpkin right there. I want to mimic that drop shadow over here. Plus, I also want to put an outline around this. We'll do those back over here on layers. But the outline on the shape layer, so click on your shape layer. Go up to layer, come down to layer style and style settings. And we'll start with a stroke. And with the stroke, click over here for a select color. And use the eyedropper to grab one of the bright orange areas in here from that pumpkin. Choose OK. Make sure your position is set to outside, opacity at 100, and then increase the stroke size. And I think on this, somewhere around 29, maybe 30 is pretty good. That's a nice size. Now you need that drop shadow happening in here, and that's up here under drop shadow. And set your lighting angle over here towards the left-hand side. I was kind of like 135 in here somewhere. That brings it down towards the bottom right-hand side. This line here points to the light source, so your shadow is the opposite direction. Bring distance over. It may have to come over quite a ways to see that. And there we go. There's the shadow beginning to show. I'll put the opacity clear to the top so you can see that. There's that shadow right there. And I'll put it back to 35, which is the default, and good enough for us. Now, this shadow here is softer than this shadow here. So you want to match that softness, and that's the size control right there. So move this over here to the right just a little bit. And the softness now matches. And it looks like we have that shadow blending in perfectly with this shadow. Maybe just a little bit more opacity on that. Just a touch. And there we go. This shadow is now matching that shadow perfectly. Choose OK. Come back to the background layer. Notice how the background changed when we use that new background from the graphics. That's another reason why I wanted to have that duplicate up here because the background does change when you use that tool. Now we did a lot of stuff in here with layer masks. We also did some stuff in here with the layer styles right here and the drop shadow. If you want more information about how to use those tools, the best place to get that is with my HTG Photo Coach program, where I have text-based instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on how to use all the different tools and panels, everything inside of Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Plus, I'll put this finished working file in there in the project section as well. So you can download the actual finished file if you want to have this as reference. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe because I do new videos all the time. You don't want to miss any of those. And to make sure you don't miss any videos, make sure you hit that bell icon for notifications of when my new videos go up. And I'll see you next time.